Hi, my name is Peter Johnson and I teach a class called Innovative Arts. Over the past few years I've gotten really good at trying to help kids get started with 3D modeling and I want to share in this video all of the mistakes that I've made, all the pro tips that I've picked up, all of the systems I've developed and the advice that I could give someone who's getting started with students in 3D modeling. Specifically we're going to be using Tinkercad because it's free, it's easy to use. My, my own kids started using it at five years old and for years now I've been helping students try to get good at it and progress over time where you know in fifth grade my first students you know they're making simple stuff but by eighth grade we're trying to challenge ourselves. So I've got a lot of experience I want to share so let's get started. So here, here's everything I know about 3D modeling. First off, when can students start 3D modeling? Definitely about five years old, a, a kid can walk onto Tinkercad, start using a mouse to, to copy what you are doing. If you can make basic things in Tinkercad, then someone can copy you and, and try to practice their own skills. And what's a lot of fun is that you can, you can find kids who are exceptionally talented at the, the spatial stuff, at being creative, and you'll, you'll be more impressed than, than disappointed if you start with young elementary school students. You need to be able to explain it clearly and show them exactly where to click and, and what to do, but once they start getting it, you'll, you'll be impressed with what they can do. How does someone teach 3D modeling? Well, I spent years trying to have students get better at it and, and, and learn the program. And what I found after many years of frustration was that I was going too fast. I was showing them all of the features of all the programs and thinking, okay, they're going to know how to put this together. They're going to remember it when they need it. And they just didn't. And so what, I, what I've developed are a series of lessons that will focus on one or two different tools, one or two different things that you use in Tinkercad and it gives you practice using them. So in, in Tinkercad there's there's the group tool and there's the the work plane tool and if you're working with people who aren't, you know, adults, we need to practice each one individually and you, you can't just skip around, you can't show them once and just assume they'll remember when they need it. I have an entire video just on how to use the align button, making a yin yang, because it's it's a tool that is handy and you need it often, but kids don't realize it's there. They don't remember it's there. They've never learned how to use it. And so you have to practice it specifically. It takes weeks, but the kids enjoy it. They get a lot of practice making a lot of things. And it's, it's very fun to be someone teaching. I'll make sure to put the link to all of my videos down below the video here. Next would be the pro tips, uh, what I've tried and what I've found to work. And I, I just shared my number one pro tip is you need to teach each tool individually. You need to make sure you go slow, give them practice, give them examples, and make sure that you don't assume that somebody knows something just because you, you showed it to them once and you, you said it. You know, you need to have them use it, have them experience it, have them find a need for it. You need to go slow to go fast and make sure to make plenty of example ones. And the next pro tip will, will just be have kids try to, to look at something and figure out what kind of shape to start with. Should you start with a cylinder or should you start with a sphere? And just starting to look at things and say, oh, a sphere can make all sorts of things. And OK, over here, cylinders can make all sorts of different things. And when you start putting those shapes together, you're, you're, you're giving them a powerful, powerful way to see the world and start documenting it. Another pro tip will be to not just focus on, you know, printing and it, can, can we get this printed? How many can we print? How fast can we print it? How big can we print it? If you instead focus on, hey, we're going to design, we're going to get good at designing. We're not going to even talk about printing something until we've designed 10 different things. We're not even going to start thinking about what to do next until we get the basics down, slowing your students down and, and just getting them to realize this is a process, this is going to take a while, and this is not going to be, you know, an instantaneous skill that you have. It's going to take practice and a lot of thinking. Uh, definitely lay that out for them in the beginning so that they, you know, 
they can buy in and they can say, okay, today was difficult, but it'll be a little easier tomorrow and I'm making connections in my brain. There's, there's all sorts of good connections that you can make with, with good habits and, and, and learning that come with the, their first day of 3D modeling and then their second day and then their third day. They can see, oh, I am getting better at this. This is getting easier and getting, I, I can have confidence in myself because I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I didn't think I could and now I can. And my last pro tip is going to be to screenshot and, and teach kids how to keep screenshots of their work because not everything's going to be printed, obviously, but they'll, they'll create these awesome creations that have colors and details that printing will actually ruin. You want them to keep screenshots and, and be able to organize them, access them, see the, see the pile of screenshots that they have grow over time so that they, they're not just losing their, their work and, and kind of forgetting about it. They're, they're building a portfolio of what they have. It, it's especially powerful if you can have them turn them into you and then you can be sharing them out and saying, wow, hey, look at what, what, what's going on in this student and here, here's what this person... Now I've made many mistakes and there's, there's just no end to all uh, the trial and error that it's taken. I've shared how I will sequence my videos out and I will give them, you know, just a little, a, a little lesson and then we got work time and we're trying to apply it and we're trying to make projects with just that tool and just that couple of shapes. The biggest mistake I think we have is trying to get them to go too far and too fast. There's no way to rush the thinking and the, 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 the spatial awareness that they need. So taking 3D modeling in the classroom further, you can try to 3D model objects that are around the room. You can try to 3D model entire spaces like a classroom. You can try to have approximations. Okay, let's make, make one person, now we're going to duplicate it. Make one chair, now we're going to duplicate it. And have kids learn how to slowly build complex systems out of many simple things. As I said before, have your students break down projects and so they're seeing individual components to see that the, it isn't that complicated. They don't have to, to see this 30 piece complicated thing that it's actually 30 simple little pieces that have come together. And you want to encourage your students to be on the lookout for tutorials and projects that they really find interesting that they can pursue on their own. YouTube, I, I consider YouTube the most useful resource humans have ever made. I would encourage people to not be afraid of using YouTube for the good that it is. And we should be teaching kids how to use resources like YouTube to extend their learning, to do something that's cool, do something that's interesting. If you have a student who is really ex exceptional at 3D modeling, then you should be helping them find it more interesting projects, leveling up your own skills, and continuing to push them to learn more and more and more. Instead of just giving them an A and saying, hey, you, you've got an A, you don't have to do any more, you could be saying, what cool thing are we going to find next? How are we going to push this further? And lastly, you could have your students build a portfolio. Uh, there's many ways to do it. My own students build their portfolios on the Puzzle Shift Create website and it, they're able to post to the different creator types like digital creator or engineer in, in the case of 3D modeling. And over time, their timeline is just full of all the cool stuff that they made and their, their friends can comment on it. It's, it's a really cool experience. So finding them a way that they can build their own portfolio is gonna be a great way for these students to, to see and, and show off and, and take some pride in what they're doing at school. I hope you found this useful. There's so much to, uh, to learn and to do, and, and there's so much opportunity in this space of, of 3D modeling and 3D printing. The next video I'm, I'm doing is on 3D printing in the classroom and how to create a system that's manageable for you as a teacher and that is um, interesting and helpful to the students as well. So it's not all on you. So uh, see you in that next video, and have a great day.